What judgment shall I dread doing no wrong? You have among you many a purchased slave, which like your asses, your dogs and your mules, you use in abject and in slavish parts. Now slaves are bought and the owner could do anything with the slaves. He could make the slaves do any low, mean work. So here Shylock says, treat, uh, slaves were treated like dogs and mules, like animals. Abject and in slavish parts mean very low, mean work. The slaves have to do anything which the owner tells them to do. Because the slaves were owned by the owners. And they had complete authority over them. They had to obey the owner, owners. They had to obey the people who purchased them, who bought them. You use an abject and in slavish parts because you bought them. Because you bought them with money, you have complete authority over these slaves and they are forced to do anything which you ask them to do, even very low menial tasks. Shall I say to you, let them be free? If I tell you to give the freedom to these slaves, will you do it? Shall I say, tell you, shall I say to you, let them be free, marry them to your heirs. Let the slaves marry your sons and daughters. Heirs means sons and daughters. Will you allow these slaves whom you have bought with money to marry your sons and daughters? Let them be free, marry them to your heirs. Why sweat they under burdens? Why are you making them do such heavy work that they are sweating? Why are you forcing them to do such heavy work? Let their beds be made as soft as yours. Let them lie, let them rest in the same type of bed, in the same comfortable beds in which you are sleeping. Let them rest and sleep in the same comfortable beds which you use. Let their beds be made as soft as yours and let their pallets be seasoned with such viands. Viands means food. You give them the same type of food which you are eating, the same tasty food which you are eating and you allow them to sit at the same table where you eat the food. Let their beds be made as soft as yours and let their pallets be seen. Seasoned with such wine. Palance means they, they should be given tasty food. They should enjoy tasty food. Be seasoned with such wine. The same tasty food that you are eating, you should give to your slaves. You will answer. What will be your reply? You will say, the slaves are ours. The slaves belong to us. So do I answer you. So I am answering your question. The pound of flesh which I demand of him. Of him is Antonio is dearly bought. It's very important that I take the pound of flesh. Without I, it involved a great deal of effort on my part to take revenge on Antonio, to destroy Antonio. You will answer the slaves are asked. So do I answer the pound of flesh which I demand of him is dearly bought. Means I took a lot of effort in getting this pound of flesh in, uh, take, in trying to take revenge on Antonio, it costs me a lot of effort. So do I answer the pound of flesh which I demand of him is dearly bought. It's mine and I will have it. It is my pound of flesh now. According to the terms and conditions of the bond, Antonio's pound of flesh is mine and I will not have anything else. I will have only that. If you deny me, if you refuse to give me this pound of flesh, fie upon your law. People will say that there is no justice in your country. People will find fault to the judiciary and they will say that uh, equal justice is not given to all people in Venice. If you deny me, fie upon your law. There is no force in the decrees of Venice no power, no influence, no legal authority in Venice can prevent me from taking my bond, from prevent me from taking the penalty. There is no force in the decrees means the law of Venice. I stand for judgment. I want justice. Answer, shall I have it? 
Now the Duke says, upon my power I may dismiss this court. I have to stop all the proceedings of the court. I have to adjourn the court because I am, uh, I, I am not able to save Antonio. All my efforts in trying to save Antonio are futile. <coughs> Unless Bellario, a learned doctor, whom I have sent for to determine this, come here today. I have asked Bellario, a very famous lawyer, to come here and solve the problem between Shylock and Antonio. My lord here stays without a messenger with letters from the doctor. New come from Padua. New come means he has just arrived. Celerio says a messenger has just arrived from Padua and he is bringing letters from the lawyer Bellario, from Dr. Bellario. My lord here stays without, without means outside, outside the court. A messenger with letters from the doctor. New come from Padua, who has just arrived from Padua. Bring us the letters, call the messenger. Bassanio tries to comfort Antonio. Good cheer, Antonio. Don't be worried, don't be discouraged. Don't look pale or sad. What man, courage yet, be brave. The Jew shall have my flesh, blood, bones and all. I am ready to sacrifice my life. I am ready to give my blood, bones and everything. But I will not allow you to shed even one drop of blood for my sake. I am ready to sacrifice my life. Good cheer, Antonio, what man courage yet. The Jew shall have my flesh, blood, bones and all. Ere thou shalt lose for me, one drop of blood. I will not allow Shylock to destroy you, to take your life. I will sacrifice myself for you. I am ready to give everything, my flesh, blood and bones to save you. Antonio, I am the tainted weather of the flock. Tainted means diseased or sick. So he says, if a sheep in the flock is diseased or sick, that is the first one to be killed. And Antonio means that he is ready for death. I am the tainted weather of the flock. Meet us for death. I am the most suitable person for death. Bassanio has just got married and uh, so he is not, uh, he is not as suitable as Antonio for death. The weakest kind of fruit drops earliest to the ground. The fruit which is rotten, the fruit which is ripe, will fall first to the ground. So, the Ant uh, Antonio here compares himself to the sick sheep in the flock and even to the fruit which is overripe and the sick sheep in the flock will be the first one to be killed. And the ripe or overripe fruit in the, on the tree will be the first one to fall down. So he compares himself to the fruit and the six sheep in the flock. He is ready for death. He is not frightened to die. He is ready to die for the sake of Bassanio. So let me be. You cannot better be employed Bassanio than to live and write my epitaph. You can write the inscription on my tomb. After I die, because it is impossible that I will live after Shylock has cut my pound of flesh, it is better for you to live and write my the inscription on my tombstone. That is Epita. Enter Nerissa, dressed like a lawyer's clerk. Came you from Padua from Bellario. Now here, Portia will come dressed as a lawyer. And Nerissa will come dressed as a lawyer's clerk. Came you from Padua, from Bellario? From both, my lord. Bellario greets your grace. Bellario sends its greetings to you. Presents a letter. Now at that moment, Shylock is sharpening his knife on the sole of his shoe. S-O-L-E. Why dost thou wet thy knife so earnestly? And Shylock says, to cut the forfeiture from that bankrupt there. 
I'm sharpening my knife to cut the pound of Antonio's flesh because he is a bankrupt. He does not have money to repay the loan. And Graciano says, not on thy soul, S-O-L-E, but you sharpen it on your soul, S-O-U-L. Two words which have the same pronunciation, but the spelling is different, the meaning is different. This, in Shakespeare's uh, text, we say that this is pun. The, the grammatical term for this kind of usage is pun. So Graciano tells him, you don't sharpen your knife on your, the sole of your shoe, S-O-L-E, the sole of your shoe, but you sharpen it on your soul, S-O-U-L. You sharpen it on the soul because your heart is so hard. Your heart is like a stone and you can sharpen it on your heart. Thou makest thy knife keen, you are sharpening your knife. But no metal can, no, not the hangman's axe, bear the half keenness of thy sharp envy. Your envy, your hatred, your jealousy is sharper, is more intense than any knife or blade. Can no prayers pierce thee? Will you not be changed by any prayer? Will you not show sympathy by any prayers which we, are, we can make for you? No, none that thou hast wit enough to make. You cannot change me by any request, by any pleading, by any prayer. You cannot change my mind. Graciano, oh be thou damned inexorable dog. You are a shameless creature, you are worse than a dog. And for thy life let justice be accused. If a man like Shylock is allowed to live, the very justice system should be accused. We will find fault with the justice system if a person like Shylock, who is so cruel, who is so eager to destroy another person, is allowed to live, then the very justice system should be blamed. And for thy life, let justice be accused. So the justice, the system should be blamed if Shylock is allowed to live. Thou almost makest me waver in my faith to hold opinion with Pythagoras that souls of animals infuse themselves into the trunks of men. You are making me change my Christian belief. Pythagoras was a Greek philosopher and a mathematician also. He believed that the souls of animals when they die infuse themselves into the bodies of men. That is his belief. So, Graciano is saying the cruelty, the hardness of heart shown by Shaila almost makes him waver in his faith, makes him lose his belief. To hold opinion with Pythagoras that souls of animals infuse themselves into the trunks of men. Trunk is body. You are making me waver in my faith, change my faith, change my belief. Thy cursed spirit, the cruel soul of Shylock, the cruel heart of Shylock, governed a wolf. Before the soul of Shylock entered his body, the soul of Shylock was in a wolf, was in the body of a wolf. And this wolf was hanged because this wolf destroyed many human beings. And when this wolf was hanged and Shylock was waiting to be born, the soul of the wolf entered into the body of Shylock. That is why Shylock's desires, intentions are so cruel, so wicked, so eager to destroy other people, so eager to destroy Antonio. Thy courage spirit governed a wolf who hanged for human slaughter even from the gallows did his well soul sleep. And whilst thou layest in thy unhallowed dam, infused itself in thee, for thy desires are wolfish, starved, and ravenous.